the Olympia. This is, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. the greatest Olympia of our lifetime, at least, <laughs> if not the greatest Olympia of all time, because we have a sitting Mr. Olympia who I'm biased. Brandon, the Currys are like... Their kids are coming over to play with our kids later today. You know what I mean? Like, I'm biased as shit, but I'm also friends with Phil. He's not family to me, but he's a friend. And I try to keep as objective as possible, as you have to do as a judge. And I've judged over 50 bodybuilding shows. I understand objectivity. And there's a lot of variables at play. Can Phil bring back his 2013-ish physique? Can Brandon improve? Because he was off for the Olympia because he competed in the Arnold. And his, he had to literally, I don't know if people know this, we went over this on our podcast. He had to do like, for someone who doesn't do barely any cardio, he was doing like two hours a day. His body was reject Like he'd been dieting for a year and training hard yeah. for a year because he went hard at the Arnold because shit. He ain't, I mean, he came in last like three years before he won the Olympia. Last, like dead last. So you have two variables. We, we haven't seen the best of Brandon. We haven't seen the best of Phil since the early 2010s. Seven years ago. Seven years ago, and he lost to Sean Roden. I don't think anybody, and I'm, I love Sean, I don't think anybody here is going to argue that Brandon can't beat Sean. So right. all those variables at play, all just personal decisions aside, personal, what do you see happening at the Mr. Olympia? Who's your pick? So first of all, I'm actually sad that Flex Lewis is not going to be there. So I really, really, really wanted to see him yes. on stage. I felt like yeah. he's right up there in the mix. You know what I mean? Like, I, I had him top three pretty much I had no matter what. I do want to yeah. see what Rami looks like, but I don't feel like Rami's going to be a threat this year. I just feel like Rami just plays that mask game too much, and by himself, he looks like Mr. Olympia, kind of like Dennis James used to be. Yes. Like, you take those pants in the tank tops, and all of a sudden, you show up the day of the show, and you're like, what the hell happened? The parking lot himself, Mr. Olympia. Like, yeah. Yeah, the, it was the string tank top Mr. Olympia parking lot or something like that, they call it, yeah. <laughs> But if I say, if you said Brandon's at a hundred percent and Phil's at a hundred percent and they're both standing there at a hundred percent, Brandon, I love you, man, but Phil wins. It's just a genetic component. It doesn't matter how big Brandon is. He doesn't have that detail that Phil has genetically. And it's not from training. It's not from drugs. It's not from any of that stuff. It is literally part of Phil's genetics Yes. with the, the streamlined waistline. If the, um, his waist is fixed, he's just too hard, too dense. And he basically just loses on mass because he's still shapely too. So he still has shape. Brandon's going to be big as a house and he's going to dwarf him. When you stand them side by side in the Olympia stage and they turn around, it's those little details yeah. that Phil's going to have that makes people go, wow, what the hell is that? Brandon, you're just overwhelmed with his size and shape. He's got a beautiful silhouette, super big, super full. And if I had to choose a, a physique when I was in my off season, I'd be like, Dude, I want to be like him. He's so big. Yes. Right? You know, when he's on, man, it's just his genetic component. They call him the gift. And I really think that's what it is. I had him honestly if nothing had happened to him injury wise, like the, the mesh and stuff he had in his stomach, I had him easily being able to win nine Olympias. Yes, and I'm yeah. not the only one that said that before, you know, but he had that issue with the stomach. Now him taking that year off, I think was a good idea to let his body heal. And now, you know, from what I'm understanding in Phil's camp, like I'm really good friends with him and his wife. And they're like, man, he's like ready now. Like he's ready to go right now. And that's, you know, way ahead of schedule. When Phil's always lean, he's always ready to go. So I personally, if they're both hundred percent now, Phil's off, he can be beaten. We saw it with Sean Roden. Yeah. So if Phil is off for whatever reason it is and Brandon nails it, he's going to take him, you know? Now, I don't know who else. Um, I know Regan Grimes is headed there, but I don't really see him being in the mix. Same, yeah. You know, maybe top 10 and maybe, I don't know. But Hottie, um, Hottie's Dexter, an impressive, or, Hottie's impressive. Dexter's. Hottie too, man, yeah, I got him in top three too, if, if all goes well. And, you know, I, I'd say it'd be Phil and, and uh, Brandon in the top two mm. and then Hottie, you know, third. But I also heard that Kai Green had an announcement today. Oh, Supposedly, shit. I think Kai had some great big announcement. Now I was like, that would be something, right? That Kai would jump into the Olympia because he's in shape. Would he be able to jump in the Olympia in four weeks and go toe to toe with, you know, I think all being said, I think Kai would beat Brandon. You know, he's way bigger, denser. I think he would actually beat him. Again, I love Brandon. I love, I love him as a person. I love his oh. physique and I follow his entire mm -hmm. career. If you have guys that genetic wise are just kind of on the next level, um, I could see Kai and Phil going at it again for the top two spots. Now, if Phil's off, we've seen Kai almost beat him before. If Phil's off, could Kai take him? Yeah, but Phil at 100%, I feel like takes these guys out. I, I'm going to disagree based on we haven't seen Kai in a long time. He's getting older. Like, it, it's hard to bring what you need to bring. I mean, he's in his mid-40s, and yeah. I mean, it's it's hard. It's harder. Like, for me, actually, I feel I'm, I could, if, I, if I decide to compete, which I can't do, there's no way I could fit that in right now. 
Um, I tried yeah. and I failed miserably. Um, I thought that was awesome that you like actually came out and talked about it too, yeah. that you were like, look, I just can't do this and fuck it. You know, I, like, I choose my family over this shit. You know, like I, that was dude, awesome. Dude, Matt, Matt was here, bro. I had a bad, it was one bad day. Like he, I was all like, yeah, yeah. And then the, I hit that, but you, you ever get to that point and I'll get back to the Olympia where you hit that body fat percentage that you just know you're ready. Cause you're an asshole. I hit it and I forgot what it was like. And it was one day and my daughter's team won district champions that night, which was phenomenal. I was like, holy shit. She's a freshman district champion. And she wasn't, she didn't play enough for her liking. Uh, my daughter's extreme. She's a different, she's wired differently than any of us. I would have been like, fuck it. We won. You know, she's like, I could have contributed more. I'm like, oh, fucking celebrate. She's mad. Like, and I was mad at her because she wasn't happy enough. <laughs> and I was like, and I was snappy all day. And I'm like, that night I was like, it was like nine 30. And I told Kay, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> don't even, don't even. Cause I knew that she was going to come at me and be like, you're a dick. And I preemptively was like, okay, I don't really want her calling me a dick right now. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm done. And then I came in here and I filmed that video right away. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to turn back because I was a fucking dick. Like it was a day of dick. Um, horrible. But, um, Kai, Kai's older. Um, I think that, I think that um, that would be a variable, but I don't see him really doing much to Brandon. I do see him cracking. I, I do see him being in the mix. You know what I mean? Like it would become less of a two person and one person. So if Phil isn't a hundred percent and Brandon's a hundred percent, even if Phil's 90%, I think that Brandon and a hundred percent being five to 10% better than Brandon was last year. There's so many variables in bodybuilding because it's one day. Um, I think Brandon can take Phil because if that happens now, if they're both at hundred percent of what we know their hundred percent is, you can't beat Phil Heath at his best. Even Ronnie Coleman couldn't beat Phil Heath at his best. When Ronnie Coleman was at his best, even when Ronnie was 290 with shredded glutes, Ronnie would have looked like just a blocky fat motherfucker. I mean, next to yeah. Phil and I love Ronnie to death, but Phil is just so impressive and so 3d and, but the onus is on Phil bringing a hundred percent. He needs to bring 2013 Phil. He needs to bring the Phil that just wowed everybody that was called the gift. If he brings the 2015, 2016, 2000, if he brings any of those fills, I think Brandon has put enough into it and he will make good enough improvements to be able to take him. So the caveat is how good did that surgery work? Because Phil's well, how back. Good that and how good of an offseason did Brandon have, too? Yeah. I saw him, I mean, this was last week, and I was like, holy shit. He looks like, just when you think he can't get any bigger, you know, he gets bigger. But he was still separated, you know? But again, this is like four weeks out. So these guys look a certain way now, and you're trying to picture, like, what's going to happen on the day of the show, you know? So, like, who the fuck knows? Like, something could go drastically wrong in any one of their preps. They could, one of them could get fucking COVID for all we know, yeah. not even be able to compete, you know what I mean? You're right. It's just, it's one of those things, like, you know, with Rami, I feel like, he needs to stop playing the size game. Like, whatever the hell is going on with his quads and his shoulders, stop. Like, it looks <laughs> like, you know, I don't know what, it, I got an idea of what's going on. But I like, know exactly what's going on. Look the same, you know what I mean? They're looking at it going, listen, you look like one of those musclehead cartoons now. Remember those guys? Like, <laughs> his kids like, he legit looks like one of those guys now. And I'm like, you've succeeded if you want it to be a musclehead cartoon, but you're probably not going to be Mr. Olympia looking like that, you know? He's, he's an amazing specimen. I'll give him that. I just, you know, and we've seen more updated pictures of Brandon um, than, than what you'll see on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, it's, it's stupid. And Phil, I've seen, I saw a picture of his arm the other day, and I'm like, Fuck. I mean, all I, this is kind of like when, when the election, who do you think is going to win? I'm like, well, here's some thoughts of some variables that can happen. But at the end of the day, as they send the show Ozark, I don't know shit about fuck. I don't know anything. Yeah. I mean, Brandon, we haven't, we have loved it. He, Brandon is a variable because he has the muscle maturity. He's in his mid thirties and he's made improvements like if you look at just a linear graph chart and that's how we that's how we run companies right you look at growth and you look at expectations like just planning for inventory etc if you look at phil his chart is literally flat he goes up really fast he plateaus and then he goes down that's his career and, and whether you like it or not he he hasn't made improvements since the the early 2013 2010s brandon right now is straight up linear so if you're looking at a chart, if you're doing this on mathematics and you're just doing this on progress chart and momentum, 
Brandon wins. If you do it on visual and what you've seen of Phil and what you've seen of Brandon, Phil wins. So the key is what they look like that day and what the judges want to see. But again, I'm with you. Phil in person has a 3D, and you don't get this from pictures. Yeah. And And I trained with Phil Heath three weeks out from the Olympia for a few days. Phil, and this is back when he was Phil, before the stomach issues. His muscles and his, it, they, they're not human. They have this 3D fucking beautiful, they're just fucking beautiful. And you can't, rep, you can't appreciate that in pictures. So even when you see pictures of Brandon V. Phil, unless you're sitting at that show live, you cannot appreciate the difference in detail. And that's the things the judges have to judge. And a lot of people think that some guy, oh no, this guy won, I saw the pictures. I'm like, you don't know shit. Yeah. And you're a judge, you you probably get that. They look one way in the gym, and I guarantee you they look different when they step on stage. Yep. You know, they even look different in the back. So it depends on where you see them, but when they get on stage and those lights hit them the right way and they have the oil on and they got a pump and they dry it out and stuff, like that's when you really go, holy shit. You know, like, it's a level that, you know, you or I, we would have to, we'd never get there. We just don't have that in us. Play in the simple. We don't have the genetics. Our bodies won't do it. When you look at it, you're like, it's not just a beautiful thing. You're like, that's what, you know, a perfect specimen in our sport would look like if they were born to be this, you know? And that's all it is. And, you know, that was a lesson that I had to learn. 